Earth Overshoot Day is the day that we mark where the world has consumed enough resources, natural resources, that the, more than the uh, planet is able to generate in a year. And when this started in 1987, the day was December 19th. In 2016, we've already passed it. Ooh. Yay, we Yay. did it. Yay, we achieved So that happened on August 8th of this year. So it's just happened yeah. a few days ago. Um, and in the past, let's see, in 2014, it was August 19th. In 2015, it was August 13th. So it's slowly yeah. ticking up a few days each year, meaning that we are not lessening our uh, consumption of natural resources at all. That's that's no good. Now, uh, I would figure, I would I would think that the U.S. is up there in terms of uh, natural resource uh, consumer. Yeah, we typically hear know. that we're the worst, uh, but this time we aren't. Yeah, Check out go that USA. <laughs> who did we? Who who beat us? The graphic. Yeah. Oh, uh, meatloaf. We want it. <gasps> okay, Australia is in the lead, consuming 5.4 times as many natural resources that the... So that's 5.4 years, basically, right? Wow. Um, so, oh, no, no, is it? No. No, it's how many Earths we yeah, need... Yeah, that's how many Earths. ...to, you, to supply their mm -hmm. natural resource consumption. Austra if everyone in the world lived like Australia, we would need 5.4 worlds to uh, supply our Oof. consumption. If you look at this, the only ones who are living under the Earth's supply level is India. Yeah. Which is surprising considering how many people live in India. So good job, India. The rest of us are doing pretty badly. I'm curious about that, actually, how India manages and if that's uh, through really good resource management or is it the fact that they have so much poverty there that because people aren't actually being fed and housed. And it's that's not my really fear. made clear. This yeah. data does come from the Global Footprint Network. Mm -hmm. It is uh, valid as of this year. Yeah. Um, it's not really clear how this is reached because we, before we were talking about, oh, you suspected China would be in the lead or because of all the industrial uh, yeah. usage and, and factories consuming. Mm -hmm. and, uh, that was not the case. It was up there, but it wasn't yeah. the highest one for sure. Australia was in the lead, followed by the US. Um, Carbon emissions seem to be the biggest contributor to this, yeah. uh, according to the GFN. So according to them, carbon footprint now comprises upward of 60% of our civilization's demand on nature. Ooh, so I guess maybe there aren't a lot of cars in India? Yeah. Or not too many cars? Yeah, I, could, I can see that. Yeah, I mean, the, you know, U.S., Aus Australia, not just cars, but in terms of like, you know, we don't have a large factory business now, mm -hmm. but we have cars and Australia does have still a lot of um, industry down there. Yeah, that's, that's tough, you know, and, and this is a good lesson for um, emerging and developing com uh, countries that, you know, as we go forward, they can, they can start using renewable resources as a way to uh, start growing their corporate companies and industrialized nations. Um, and start, you know, reducing that carbon footprint. I know it's a lot cheaper if you want to use coal and gas and such, but there are a lot of renewable yeah. resources out there. This year, the UK, Germany, and Portugal have both, all three have set records for renewables awesome. and have asked the public to take action to live more sustainable lives. And Costa Rica actually generated 97% of its electricity from renewable resources in the first three months of this year. So... It's not all terrible. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm actually, I'm, I'm really excited. So I'm doing Burning Man for the first time ever. And the whole concept of Burning Man is about living off, you know, your own, like just living on your own. And so we're doing like all these like sustainable living, like we're getting a solar panel to charge some stuff and, uh, you know, taking showers and reusing that water to power our swamp coolers. Is so acid renewable? Uh, acid? You know, like drugs? I don't know. I don't. I wouldn't know. So I actually can't do anything because of the. Um, I because I'm. On, I'm not um, accusing you of doing drugs. No, no. But I'm, I'm accusing everyone at Burning, at Burning Man, Man yeah. always no, doing all. But the actually, drugs. My, my psych my psychiatrist was like, Meredith, you cannot do anything because of my anxiety medication. Uh -huh. She's like, if you do anything, you could actually get serotonin syndrome and die. Yeah, don't do that. Yeah, I don't want to do that. But I yeah, so I'm really excited to kind of learn to like, you know, reduce my carbon footprint in these this eight days I'm in the desert, mm -hmm. uh, and then what I learned from there I hope to actually bring home and and kind of 
you know, start living my day-to-day -day life a little bit more. Yeah, better. it's little changes. Yeah. I mean, like, it's, I, I don't like, I think people dislike hearing that they're doing something wrong, but being able, being willing to change yeah. is a big part of it. And it's a big part of uh, self-growth. Just exactly. remember that, everyone. Audience, have you done anything to reduce your carbon footprint this year or any year? Let us know below in the comments and please like and subscribe for more.